Okay, so what are you saying people and welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel. So today guys, like always, another weekly analysis for you. On the screen, other pairs will be analyzing today, but try to make sure you stay to the end of the video because I will be going through each pair, analyzing what happened this week and also forecasting the next. So I do hope you enjoyed the video, but with all that said, you know, let's get straight into it. Okay, so for EURUSD this week, we had a bit of a move to the upside, creating some new highs past this point. We did see a quite steep correction come back down, but we did see um, some bullish momentum. Coming into the week, I was a bit more neutral for EURUSD as I had some few, I had a, a few good reasons why I could see the market push bullish, and I also had a few good reasons why I could see the market push bearish. And also in the four weeks time frame, we were consolidating. So I didn't really want to marry a bias for EURUSD. I wanted the um, wait for the market to make its move first and then I'll look to, to follow and, and continue that push um, you know later in the week but however you know when we did actually have the breakout because originally on Monday we did have a false breakout to the downside here market did break below um, the support but turned out to be false and then we actually had the breakout but again you can see that candle um, very very big bullish candle and we never quite came back for the retest of that area so wasn't really able to take advantage of that coming straight into the resistance but you can see very steep correction come back down taking us back below this level of resistance here so i am going to be treating this move that we saw um this week that break to the upside as a as a as a false break since we are closing firmly back below that level so coming into next week i want to see a lower high because the market is still producing higher highs and higher lows as you can see here higher high higher high higher high higher low higher low obviously in, in respect to that previous low down there so we do have this kind of choppy bullish um you know daily stroke four hour trend that is forming here but because the market is having such a hard time to break through this resistance you know still holding on to a very key level of support you know alongside here very nice push to the upside broke below now we are holding that as resistance i'm expecting the market to see some downside now uh, and the overall trend which is still bearish to continue back to the downside. So I am looking for uh, selling opportunities this week. I won't write off the longs, but my, my, my main bias, the main opportunity I'm really looking for are gonna be the sells. So I want the market to give me a lower high because as, as I said previously, the market is still producing higher highs and higher lows. So we'll be waiting for that lower high to confirm to us that the bulls are failing, the, bear, the bears are stepping back in control. And now we can start to see that bearish momentum in the higher time frames take us much much lower so i'm looking for a pull back into the zone at a lower high to form then we'll be looking at some shorts to the downside and i have two targets i'm looking at this week this prior low here and also this low here as well again we can be looking at the lows all the way down here but i think for the week best to play it safe coming back into these areas we could see some strong bullish momentum you know start to, to push us higher from these areas so we'll be looking at sales this will be the the main kind of setup i'm looking at for this week as long as we can hold that resistance looking at sales if we don't and we break above then we can be looking at that retest for some long opportunities back into the highs over here which is um, around the 1.118 area and possibly into the 1.23, which is this area with all those wicks, which is around that 1.23 area. So again, like I said, I won't write off the long opportunities because again, if that level doesn't hold, the longs will be looking very, very good after that. But if we do put that lower high, which I'm anticipating happening, we'll be looking for shorts and those will be the targets for the week for EURUSD. Okay, so next up we've got USD JPY. Now for this pair, we did start off pretty bullish with a big candle to the upside. We saw that across, you know, pretty much every JPY pair. Big push to the upside on Monday, and then throughout the rest of the week, we were seeing some downside. And I was talking to you guys last week. I'm still bearish on this pair. This pair is, you know, definitely bullish, but I am looking for sales because of this crazy move to the upside. I'm looking to take advantage of that correction. So. For UCJPY, uh, I said I'm still waiting for the market to push a little bit higher into this resistance here. And as you can see, the market has actually pushed into this resistance. You know, big move to the downside, big move, and now we're finding out this resistance again. Big wick there just before the monthly candle closed. 
and now we're looking for some correction to the downside uh, for UCJPY. We did see that start um, last week with these bearish candles here. I'm still looking at the market coming a little bit deeper back into this last bearish candle here on the daily chart all the way down at 119. So I'm looking at you know quite a lot more downside for UCJPY. We've been very, very bullish. Now I'm looking at some corrections. So the setups I'm looking at, um, I'm mainly focused on this resistance here uh, at 122.400. So if the market stays above this and holds this as support, I'm expecting another push back into 124, um, 124.100 to be a bit more specific. Um, but I'm looking for a push to the upside. If we can get back below, then I'm looking for sales and the recess of that as resistance and then sales back into 119. But also a much uh, safer entry would be looking for the break of this support and then the retest of it and then look for sales because what I'm looking for essentially is a bit of a head and shoulders here. The left shoulder there, the head with that big spike and I'm looking for the left shoulder which I thought was forming there last week but we failed and now we're, we're back above that area again. So I'm looking for that left shoulder still uh, and then the break to the downside. So obviously taking the, the retest on the neckline would have a lot more confirmations. Um, and looking for the left shoulder, but obviously left shoulder can maximize uh, you, your pips a little bit more. So it's up to you how you want to trade it, but essentially hold that as resistance, looking for sales and also break and retest that, looking for sales, because we are still looking for that larger correction. Um, but like I said, because the market is still bullish, I know we've hit a very strong level, but the market is still bullish. Um, and it's still experiencing a lot of bullish momentum on the higher time frames. So if you do hold that as support in the pre up early on in the week, probably Monday, can be looking for some longs back up into that monthly level of resistance there. So again, not going to the, ignore the long opportunities because if they are there, we'll you know make sure to take advantage of that. But still looking for that deeper correction. So if 122 400 can hold a support looking for continuations back to 124 if we can cut if we can get back underneath it we test that as resistance looking for sales um, back to 119 or on the break of the neckline still looking for sales back down into 119 uh, for next week for use the jpy Okay, so next up we've got USD CAD. So USD CAD this week, not much from this pair, as you can see, pretty much just consolidation there around the past few days um, of those candles. So not much in terms of direction for USD CAD, still holding onto this support here around the 1.25, 1.245 area. Um, like I said last week, I still am bearish on USD CAD, looking for price to come back down into these lows here. So I still do have you know, a fair bit to go uh, for USD CAD um, in terms of target, you know, I'm looking around the 1.23, 1.250, uh, 2350 area. So uh, there's still quite a few pips uh, left to catch for USD CAD. So there's two ways I want to go about this one. Um, last week I was looking for some retracement higher up. We did kind of see it, but it was very short lived. Uh, a big spike happened uh, to the upside in the 4H, as you can see, big spike there. Price did tap into this area of support and resistance here. So just about tapped into it and see some downside. So use the CAD, I'm looking to either do one or two things now for next week. Either break through the support, come back and retest it, and then look for sales to the downside, or rally to the upside one more time, retest this. Um, you know, support term resistance a little bit deeper around the 1.26 level, and then again looking for sales and targets all the way down there. Now, if I do get some shorts from this in you know, a region, um, I will be having that as you know, probably if not my TP as uh, a place to take partials, just because it's quite a long way down, We're looking at around 240 250 pips um, from that level there. So if you do get that trade, you know, we'll be looking to take some profit at that level. If not, and the price just breaks out the, consolidate, the consolidation to the downside, we'll be looking for the retest of the consolidation uh, and obviously sells back down into that daily zone. So only looking at sales, not really bothered um, with the buys this week for USD CAD. If there are some buying opportunities, I will probably expect it to happen um, pretty early on in the week for that push to the upside. Then, you know, as soon as we come into that, I will be looking for sales. For the market to come straight back down or if not if you break for that support like i said the break and retest all of the sales and targets around the 1.23 400 1.23 300 area um, for usd cad for next week
Sorry to interrupt the video guys, but if you are enjoying the content and you're finding it useful, make sure you go hit the subscribe button down below and also make sure you drop a like as well. It really does help the channel out. But anyway, back to the video. Okay, so Euro Pound up next. Now, as you can see, quite a big push to the upside this week for Euro Pound, you know, creating some new highs past these point before we did see quite a steep correction again um, for Euro Pound there. Coming into the week, I was mainly interested at this level of support. I said, if you can hold this support, I'm looking for the market to push the upside. And if you break through the support, looking for it to return resistance uh, and then looking for a push into these lows. So as you can see, obviously the support held and had quite a big push to the upside. But after that steep correction, you can see the market is still reacting to resistance and still in line with the higher time frame trend. We do have this trend line here which I was looking at and as you can see this week we spiked into the trend line and just before the weekly candle close we did pull back there uh, on Thursday and Friday so the market is still holding resistance I do expect to see the market roll over obviously we could break through the trend line and if that happens we'll look for the reversal for the remaining um, um, you know, a few weeks um, for Euro pound for that reversal you know, coming back into some areas up there but so far the bearish market is still holding still have this resistance here holding which previously gave us that move to the downside so a prior you know lower high in the market and obviously the trend line is holding there too so i'm mainly focused on the selling opportunities for euro pound for next week back down into that support again potentially those lows but we'll have to judge it as price goes so mainly looking for push just back down to this 0 0.83 100 area um, the only way i would look for buys is if we can get back above that resistance there use it as support back above the trend line use that as support uh, and then see some upside and we can start to look for some targets there for potentially the bigger reversal but because we have had such a strong push back to the downside like i said i'm mainly focused um, on the shorting opportunities so essentially let's tidy up that level a little bit if we can hold that as resistance looking at some sales so basically looking for you know uh, a lower high to form and sells all the way back down into 0.831 if you do break above then we'll look for the retest of course and then a push into these highs here and probably start looking at some highs you know here on the left around that level there as well so again I'm not going to write off the longs for this um for this opportunity because i can still see that potential reversal happening since we're still holding that monthly uh, resistance monthly support sorry um, we're still holding that monthly support and we just closed with a new monthly candle which again is still holding so it's a monthly time frame we're still holding you know that level of support so the reversal could still potentially happen but the trend is still holding currently right now so favoring the sales um for next week if you can put a lower high in this area that'd be great and targets all the way back down there but if we do clear that use that support we'll also be looking for longs back up into 0.854 uh, for next week for euro pound okay so next up we got AUD USD now for this pair not too much has happened as you can see pretty much just consolidation um, this week for AUD USD we're still trading in a very very you know key level on the weekly time frame you can see this is where we pull back from the lower high and then dump to the downside so a lot of bearish momentum came from this area and we're still holding it currently so coming into next week as long as we can hold that as resistance i'm still bearish on adusd looking for the market to roll over but because we are consolidating though know, anything can really happen for next week so there's two main ways i'm looking to tackle this one i'm not really interested in the buys um really you know if we do go break through um this level of resistance we probably will head into the 0 0.76 area which is up uh, in this region to the next psychological level but again i'm not really interested in those buyers i want to see the weekly time frame clear that resistance before i do look for any trend continuations to the upside as long as we can hold the level which we're holding right now you know i'm still bearish and looking for the market to roll over so there's two main ways you can go about uh, looking for sales for adusd for next week you know you can either look for another push to the upside back into that resistance wait for some signals and then get short again anticipating the market breaking out that consolidation to the downside or you can go for the safer um, entry safer option which is waiting for the market to break out the consolidation to the downside waiting for the retest 
uh, and then get in short and you know, take advantage of the continuations. Um, I do have two um, targets for ADUSD shorts. Um, the overall target is this resistance here, which gave us that last sell off before you have broken above this. I'm looking for the market to come back and retest this area. But I do have a second, well, actually a first target before that main target where we can let secure partials or maybe even exit the trade completely if we are rejecting this area you know very, very strongly so i am looking at the market coming back into to this support level here at 0.73800 um, but main target is 0.73 down there so the main opportunities i am looking at is sales and you know either the retest of the lows or price coming back to retest the highs of consolidation obviously this will be a much more riskier entry but obviously you know catch more pips essentially um like i said not really interested in the longs but if you are you know we probably will break to, to 0.76 up there on the retest but for me next week AUSD looking at sales um you know hoping we can break out that consolidation and targets will be 0.73 all the way down there for next week for AUDUSD. Okay, so next up we've got NZD CAD. So NZD CAD, not too much from this one. Uh, recently, again, pretty much a strong box around the price action. You know, we are we are consolidating there, but uh, we did see brief move to the downside. Price can retrace that. So, you know, not too much in the week. You can see the weekly candle is represented by that doji. So price is still a little bit indecisive now by NZD CAD. Coming into the week was looking for some upside. I gave out two areas, you know, where I'm looking for that upside to come from. First area was this support here. Which you can see price broke through that quite easily and then the second support i gave out the second area was this level down here so still looking for the market to you know cl not climb but fall lower back into the support uh, and then see some rallies back to the highs so i still do think for the cad you know we can still see more um, upside continuation but i think we could start off bearish first tap into that level and then go bullish if i am wrong and the market does put a higher low and uh, we'll be waiting for this resistance here to break We'll be looking for the retest of that level and then buys up into that resistance there. So looking at two main opportunities for SD CAD, I first do think we'll see a bit more um, bearish momentum. So if you are going to look for those sales, you know, and anticipate price coming lower into this level of support down there, then you can look for those, you know, sales um, on probably a break and retest of this level, something like this to happen, drop to the lower time frames. Then you get your sales, you know, on the retest of that level, and it is a pretty nice level to work with. You can see two strong rejections. So if you can break through that level, retest, sells back down into 0 0.854, 50, 400, and from there we can get some really nice longs, you know, all the way potentially all the way. Obviously, we'll manage the trade, take partials, but potentially all the way back to those highs. So I'm mainly focused on the buys um, once we get the confirmation. Um, from this area here, but first looking at a little bit more downside uh, for SD CAD, but overall targets will be at the 0.88 area for next week for SD CAD. Okay, so next up we got Pound SD. So Pound SD is still kind of just you know holding on to this level of support here uh, on the left, which previously gave us that big move to the upside before you know completely collapsed back down again. So Pound NZD, I still do have some lower targets for this one if the bearish momentum does continue. I am looking at the market coming back into this level of support here, where you see from that double bottom before we did put in that bullish trend there. So I do think we can reach that level, but we could retrace first, you know, before we do come to those higher time frame targets, um, you know, primarily based that um, target on the daily and the weekly time frame, but we could still retrace. You know, before we do go and hit those targets. So, pound entity this week, I'm looking for some upside correction before we do sell off, like I was last week, looking for some upside. We did see that pretty briefly, consolidated for a bit, did see some nice bullish momentum, but we really did fail to break through this support here on the left, term resistance, and that completely dropped us to the downside. But now we are back above that same support. So, for Pound SD, what I'm looking for is two things. Either we hold on to this support, I'm looking for longs back up into that zone, and then potentially, you know, break and retest that. I'm looking for the market to return back into some areas, uh, areas of resistance, mainly around the 1.93 um, 
three region. So if we can hold that support, that would be great. And we can take advantage of that retracement. But if that level doesn't hold, we'll be looking for the break and retest and sells back down into that um, higher time frame level at around the 1.86300 area. So I'm still overall, you know, overall um, bias is bearish, but I'm trying to take advantage of the continuation um, of the retracement, sorry, back to the upside for another lower swing high before we do roll over. But if the market is far too bearish and this trend just continues, we'll look for the break and retest of this zone and see if we can go and hit those targets straight away. Obviously, we'll be looking at securing some um, of the profits uh, at this support first, you know, before we do go and hit um, the higher, higher time frame target down at 1.86. So for pound NZD, if we do hold this 1.89 level um, of support, we'll be looking for buys. First target 1.1906. Second target at 1.93, break and retest. You know, we'll be looking at the lows at 1.88 and then 1.86300 for next week. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to CAD JPY. So, CAD JPY, again, we've seen some downside this week for some of the JPY. Okay, so next up we've got CAD JPY. So, again, we see some downsides um, this week after that big spike on Monday coming into our key level of resistance. If we go into the monthly time frame, this is the area I was looking for the market to come into before I do start to look for sales for CAD JPY now, you know, after this big, big push here. So coming into that 99,100 area, in fact, we actually have tapped that 100 price range there. So I'm looking at some downside now for CAD JPY. Of course, we could move higher, tap into it again before we sell off, but I still do think the bigger move will be some correction now. Uh, for CAD JPY. So I'm looking at sales for this one. If I just put that level back in there for reference. Um, so yeah, I'm looking at sales for this one now. If we go into the 4 H time frame, we can eye out some potential setups. Um, again, for the JPY pairs, I'm kind of looking at this head and shoulder setup um, uh, to form to look to base some trades from. So again, we've got the left shoulder here that head with the big spike. Now I'm looking for the right shoulder, which again, I thought was falling earlier in the week, but we have broken through. So I'm still looking for that uh, right shoulder to form for us to break in the knee if we test it and then sell off. Um, for targets for this one, it's a little bit more tricky because there's no real reference point on the daily time frame. You can see we've had you know, so many consecutive bullish candles here. It's difficult to work out a, a, a good target for us to have. You know, the main target we could have is all the way down there. Uh, at 93 so i'm mainly using the 4h to base some targets from um of you know just levels of horizontal support resistance where the market found some nice bullish momentum from this being one you know this being a second area and that's why i'm going to be placing my targets on for cad jpy and we can include this area here as well so these are the targets i'm working with uh, for cad jpy i'm looking at the sell opportunities if we can come back retest that form the right shoulder and then we can sell off to the downside. Um, that is the main setup I'm looking for, but I'm also aware that if we don't, because currently right now we're trading above that level, if we maintain that as support, I do think the market can push back up into 100 uh, and go and retest that um, higher time frame level. So CAD JPY, I'm not going to write off, the, write off the long opportunities because if we do hold that support, I do think the market can push bullish, but if we can get below, retest that, and that's the main setup I will be focused on, um, will be the sales, and I will be looking for that low high to form, and these will be my targets, probably last target of the week will be down here at 94.600, um, but, but that is the plan essentially for next week for CAD JBY. Okay, so next up we've got pound USD. So for this pair, we started off a little bit bearish this week. Uh, and again, coming into the week, we were bearish. So as long as 1.32 held, we were looking for some downside um, for pound USD. Still do have targets all the way down here at 1.3. As you can see this week, we did not hit. Price is kind of just moving sideways a little bit, but I still do think pound USD is looking good to roll over. As long as this 1.32 resistance can hold, you know, I'm looking for the market to, to move lower. Jumping onto the 4 h time frame, you see price action isn't looking the best for pound. A little bit messy, a little bit all over the place. 
but resistance is still holding and we're still putting in, in these lower highs. So if the market can essentially hold this area, looking for one more push to the upside, hold that area. Now I am looking at some sales back down to, to 1.3. Um, break above 1.32, um, then I'll be looking at some upside because at that point we'll be placing in, you know, potentially a higher low in uh, in this area. This could be a higher low, and now we could be seeing a higher high past this point here. So if we do break above 1.32, we'll be looking for the retest of that level. Target one will be the high um, at 1.33 here, uh, and then I'll be looking at this 1.34 zone just to hit the next psychological level where we found that consolidation and dropped. So. Um, again, two opportunities there for pounds. Again, I'm still favoring the shorts. Everything is still looking bearish on the higher time frame, so I'm not really interested in the longs. But if I'm proven wrong and we do break through that level, you know, I still want to be able to take advantage of that opportunity. So, pound USD break above 1.32, looking for 1.33, and then 1.34. Pound USD hold this level 1.32, which I'm favoring um, for price to do. Looking at some sales back down to 1.3 for next week. Uh, for pound USD. Okay, so now we'll move on to pound CAD. So pound CAD still looking bearish. Uh, again, not too much this week, pretty much just consolidation. Uh, coming into the week, I was still mainly bearish. Again, I still do have that higher time frame target uh, on the weekly time frame, which is this level of support here, which you can see the market pushed into before having that big move to the upside. So Still looking at the market coming into 1.625, 1.62 down at this area. I've had this target for you know uh, two or three weeks now, and we're still looking for the market to come and hit that level. So still having a bearish bias, but we could potentially move higher a little bit first, you know, before we go and hit that level, um, or we could obviously go and break through the uh, the low. We'll have to see coming into next week. Um, but there's two main areas I'm looking to see if the market will hold which is obviously this support here, coming back for the retest of that level, that would be great. Um, or the resistance that price is currently holding here on the 4H, um, because we might just you know, roll over, hit that level, and then see um, some upside for pound CAD. So two main areas of interest, I'm not really looking at the break and retest of the low of this support, reason being is because we're so close to the target anyway, risk toward might not be the best. So I'm looking for you know, either a correction into that level there and a move to the downside or a deeper push into that support, retest that and then roll over. That one being at 1.65600 and this one being at 1.64400. So either which way, not too bothered. Obviously, if we do move a little bit higher first, that will present us um, some nicer short opportunities. Restore will be looking a lot, a lot greater but we'll have to see how price is moving uh, coming into next week of course so pound cad only looking for shorts having that short bias for a few weeks now and still looking for 1.62 um to be hit so bit of retracement either into one of these two zones and targets down at 1.62 for next week for pound cad okay so now i'm going to move on to pound jpy so pound jpy this week Nice spike to the upside. Again, we saw that with the JPY pairs and then we've seen some nice downside. We spiked into our you know, resistance zone, our zone where we're expecting to see some bearish momentum um, creep back in and start to see the buyers back away a little bit coming into this 163, 162 region where you can see the market consolidated before this big collapse of downside and we're finally retesting that region again. So I'm looking at some downside for pound JPY. I do have uh, a bearish bias. I'm looking for the market to come back and retest you know, this resistance here, which we broke through, never got the retest of. So I do think we can come back into this level before maybe going bullish again or breaking underneath and seeing some downside. We'll have to find out when we do get to that region. So I'm looking at sales for next week for pound JPY. Again, main focus is this level of resistance here. If we can hold this as resistance, looking at some sales to the downside back into those lows there. Uh, again, there is some levels of support to watch out for. Um, at four pound JPY because you can see the market is finding support here. So again, looking to manage the trade, take some um, partials, but that is the main opportunity I'm looking at for next week for pound JPY. You can also look for the break and retest of this um, level of support into those lows at 158. Again, risk reward might not be the best. 
So you probably have to drop to the lower, lower time frames to maximize that. But this will be the main opportunity I'm looking at. Again, if we do break higher to the upside um, past this level and start to use it as support, then we'll probably will continue to the highs um, back into that resistance. So again, you can take advantage of that because these JPY pairs are still bullish in the higher time frames, and we could easily see you know some more bullish continuation if they wanted uh, to do so. Um, so if you do break above this one six one four hundred level buys and um, back into 164 if not holders resistance looking for the market to roll over you know still looking for that head and shoulder left shoulder the head with the spike and now looking for the right shoulder for the market to roll over so all in all for pound jpy is still bearish looking for test of 158 if we can hold 150 uh 161 sorry 400 if not we break above looking for the retest and longs back to highs at 164 next week for pound jpy Okay, so next up we've got gold. So gold coming into the week was bullish on this one. I said there's two main areas I'm looking for gold to hold as support to look to buy from. First area for going to 4H time frame was the, the break and retest of this resistance here, which you can see the market failed pretty quickly on Monday. The market broke through quite easily. And the second area was this level of support, which we did have a manipulation um, of that level, false break to the downside, came back above, and that's where we did see some nice bullish uh, momentum from, um, from this 1918 level uh, to the upside. However, we failed to break through this resistance, strong reaction, and the market came right back down. So gold, I'm a little bit more neutral for this one. I can still see gold move to the upside. Why? Because we're still holding on to that daily support, multiple wicks to the upside and to the downside, sorry, through that support. I can still see the market pushing bullish um, from that level. We still do have higher time frame momentum. You know, it's still bullish and we still are holding above resistance and uh, turn support there on the weekly. So we still do have a lot of bullish momentum in the market. And if this is going to be the next high low for gold, you know, we definitely could see a snap of that resistance and price start to rally. However, uh, the market is having a hard time and is essentially moving sideways. So I'm going to be a bit more neutral and wait for a little bit more confirmation before I do get back into the buys uh, for gold. So if gold does actually break to the downside and we see deeper correction, I'm looking at gold coming up into this resistance here, turn support at uh, 1870. So if gold does break through this support, I'm looking at gold retesting and then continuing to the downside. Uh, something like this to happen uh, for gold um, because again the market is still potentially putting in lower highs here because uh, you can see lower high lower high potentially another lower high there as well so the market still is you know giving us that bearish momentum on the 4h so if you do break underneath this level retest they will be looking for sales back down into 1870 uh, to retest the higher time frame level but I will be looking for longs if we can clear this resistance because that would tell me that the, the buyers are starting to win the battle and we could be seeing that breakout I am looking for and then looking for buyers back up into 2000 if we can hold that support. So that is what I'm going to be looking for for gold. Um, now in this region, I'm not going to be too bothered about looking for trades, you know, pretty much. Uh, in this region here, not too bothered looking for trades, just because it's too, it's too indecisive for my liking after this strong rejection there on Friday. So we're going to be waiting to see which level breaks. If we break for the support at 1818, 1918, sorry, which is this level here, we'll be looking for the retest, sells back down to 1870. Break through this resistance, 1947, retest it. We'll be looking for longs. Obviously, first target will be this high here, but if we can clear that, we'll be looking at 2,000 up there next week uh, for gold. And last but not least, we've got Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, as you can see, nice rejection of 48K this week. We were looking at um, Bitcoin coming to reject you know, one or two levels, 48 or 50. You can see that 48K level held first. Nice strong rejection of that level. And we were looking for push back down into 44K, which was this level here. And we spiked into that level and had quite an aggressive reaction towards it. So coming into next week, I'm not looking to do too much for Bitcoin. I'm waiting to see which level breaks next because the market has rejected this resistance and support you know equally quite well so i'm going to wait for you know which level to break next and that'll tell me the next direction 
for the next few days for Bitcoin. If we break through 48K, looking for the break and retest for pushing to 50. And if you can hold 50, I'm looking for Bitcoin to come right back down into 44. But if Bitcoin does go and break 44K now, then I'm looking at Bitcoin selling off the downside back down into this support down here at 35K. So in this region here, this is we're rejecting you know, um, strong level of support and resistance. We could move a little bit sideways uh, and have a bit of corrective price action. So not really trying to uh, take advantage or, or get involved in this region um, uh, for Bitcoin. I'm gonna wait to see which level breaks and then we'll have some more clarity for the direction of Bitcoin and take advantage of those opportunities. So break and retest above 48K into 50, then looking for sales or just break and retest the 44K and looking for sales all the way back down into 35 for next week for Bitcoin. Okay guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed that and found that useful. Like always guys, any questions, agree, disagree, or just didn't understand anything, let me know in the comments down below and I will get back to you. If you are enjoying the content, feel free to like the video. It does really help the channel out. Subscribe, join the family, and also hit the bell, uh, hit the bell as well, so you don't miss out any uploads or streams in the future. But I do hope you enjoy the video guys. Have a great weekend and I'll catch you all next week.